everybody, it's Miss Mary again with another fun maker. Um, you know, Midpoint likes to do these maker videos and we have programs for all different ages. And I'll bet you can tell that this one is targeted to kids, but really it's kind of fun for everybody in the family. So I'm gonna start like I always do and remind you that I don't have formal art training or education, but I really like to make things. It's fun to try something new and discover what I can do. Sometimes the things I create look great and sometimes they don't. But every time I learn something and I have fun. Do you like making things? Oh, I sure hope so. So we're gonna look at a famous work of art and see if we can make something ourselves using the same technique. Do you remember what the word technique means? It's a big word that means way. So the way an artist makes their art is called their technique. If you like to eat spaghetti by twirling it around your fork, then twirling is your spaghetti technique. Make sense? Let's get going. So today we're looking at some illustrations by an artist named Eric Carl. I'm sure you've seen this picture before. It's from a book called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. You probably remember the story over the course of a week, a tiny caterpillar eats one apple and two pears and three plums and f what is that? Four strawberries and five oranges and so on until he's no longer tiny. Then he builds a cocoon and he comes out and he is a beautiful butterfly. Let's take a closer look at this caterpillar. Mr. Carl could have just, you know, drawn a worm shaped thing and put stuck six legs on it and said, okay, that's a caterpillar. But what he did instead was make a collage. A collage is art that you make by taking different materials and combining them to make a new thing. When you look at this caterpillar, you can see that each section of its body is a separate piece, right? The artist took a bunch of thin paper and painted it blue and then painted over that with yellow. Remember, we get green by mixing blue and yellow paints, right? Then he cut up that paper into different shapes and glued the pieces together into a caterpillar shape. You can see all the different shades of green, right? Like um, this part here has more yellow here and here. And this one I think looks pretty blue. Maybe this one has some extra blue also. And if you look here, you can see where all the pieces kind of overlap. Hmm. Then after he glued all those pieces down, he used some colored pencils to make these, you know, little hairs all over. And he cut out some feet from brown paper, cut out some pieces for the head, made some eyes. And look, it's a caterpillar. And of course, there's that great big butterfly at the end of the book. Look at all these colors. Now, if you look at, let's say, just this section, you see colors and shapes, you know? Or if you look just over here, you can see just these colors and these shapes, but it's when you put it all together that you've got a new thing, a collage, a butterfly. So today we're going to make our own art using the collage technique. For this project you're going to need a variety of materials. Okay, I'm going to move this picture over for now. You're going to want some paper. Now when Mr. Carl makes his illustrations he paints on tissue paper. I went ahead and did that ahead of time. This was plain white tissue paper that I painted on with some purple paint. And if you look closely, here you can see where there's a little bit of extra blue here. You might even be able to see some of the uh, brush marks. All right. So you can paint some paper if you want to, or if painting is not where you're at, I also took some plain paper and colored on it with purple. And again, I let the marks show where some places it's darker, some places it's lighter. You can see I used a little bit of blue on the edges of this one. So I've got some different bits of purple, a couple different colors mixed together. OK, 
okay I used mostly purple I also have some blue and some gray I'm not sure exactly which colors I'm going to use yet all right anyway so paper that you have made into a color but whether it's paint or crayon or marker or pencil um, if we really want to make our art look like Mr. Carl's art then we want to be sure to show crayon marks or brush strokes but if you just use all solid color paper that's fine because you know the number one rule of crafts with Miss Mary there is no wrong way and the right way is however you choose to do it okay so we've got our paper that we have decorated however we're also going to need to have some scissors um, a, another piece of paper like a heavy card stock or maybe a light cardboard think about um, like the weight of a cereal box that kind of cardboard because it has to be able to support you know whatever you glue to it um, and then also oh I said glue didn't I so I have a glue stick and a bottle of glue I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to need at which point and then I have some stuff now you don't have to have extra embellishments but you might want to if you have them handy you might find a use for a hole punch some ribbons I've got some pipe cleaners in here I have some buttons um, some little scraps of paper just you know stuff that you might find a use for that's one of the great things about collage is you don't have to follow exact rules you can just kind of you know use what you want to use all right oh and be sure to have table protection now this table that I use is um, well it can get dirty but don't get your table dirty at home I know you don't want to do that so hmm, we should probably think about what we want to make we could make um, a caterpillar like Mr. Carl did but you know what I'm thinking <laughs> if you watched the story time that came out a couple days ago you'll know that the stories were about elephants so I was thinking I'm gonna make an elephant today you can make whatever you want so there's a whole lot of um, kind of making it up as you go along when you make a collage so I was thinking you know what I'm gonna make a purple elephant because I like the idea of a purple elephant doesn't that sound silly yeah and I figure I want to have an elephant body shape if you think about an elephant let's see it's got a big body it has four legs um, two tusks you know those giant teeth like are they teeth are they horns that come out and that long trunk and a tail oh and don't forget the giant ears right so there's a lot of body to go with an elephant so I'm going to just jump in and see what I can come up with now let's remember that collage that Mr. Carl made he did not make the caterpillar body out of just one piece he used a bunch of pieces didn't he and stuck them all together so I'm gonna say well do you think that looks like an elephant's body maybe kind of not really well, let's see what we can do um, I'm gonna say that's the body and if you can see that as a body great and if you don't see it as a body well let's see what we can come up with to make it look more like a body I'm gonna use some of this purple paper and I'm going to cut out um, a head all right I'm gonna kind of cut a circle-ish kind of a shape think that looks sort of like a head hmm you know what I'm gonna do <laughs> I'm going to tear it oh sorry guys I don't have a fancy manicure my nails usually don't look too great that's because I work um but so I'm gonna tear this around so it has a rougher edge what do you think of that all right so here's my elephant body and there's my elephant head okay and ears I need some big elephant ears don't I I'm going to set up my elephant so we're looking at it from the side um let's see I'm going to tear this a bit I think that kind of looks like an elephant's ear maybe 
I don't know. See, that's the fun thing about making a collage is you can just sort of make it up as you go. All right. Does that kind of look like an ear? I'm not sure it's big enough because elephant ears are really big. Not just the pastries, but the actual, you know, the ear. So let's go back to this piece of purple paper. And, ooh, look at that, how I tore it. And part of it is still white, kind of in the middle. Isn't that neat? Oh, I think I want to, I think I want to use that. So let's see. Uh, that's because this is a heavy card stock. It's heavier than a regular paper like you'd get out of a printer. Hmm. What do you think? I can do like a two layer effect and make the ear like that. That's a really big ear. Do you think that ear is too big? Hmm. Let's trim it down a little. Now, grown-ups, if you want your kids to have some practice with scissors, because scissor skills are so important, then hey, have them cut. But if you want to just see how it goes by tearing it, you can do that too. All right, so we've got kind of a two-level ear like that. Let's see, so my elephant has a body and a head and an ear, legs. How many legs does an elephant have? Four, so I need four legs. Well, this is where I'm gonna get a little crazy because I'm gonna make some of my legs from my painted tissue. And this is just regular tissue paper like you would use um, for a gift, you know? Do people still put tissue inside the boxes or inside the bags? You know, it's just that regular kind of tissue that I painted with um, tempera paint. So, you know, nothing fancy. You could probably do it with watercolor if you have some of that. Ooh, that's a pretty good looking leg, hey. I'm not sure quite how I did that. I don't know if I can repeat it, but I do like it. Mm, that one's not as good. Let's see. Okay, there's another elephant leg. That's one, two. I need two more, don't I? Hmm. Now, sometimes an elephant will stand in a way that you can see all four of its legs, but sometimes you know, it might stand so you see only part of a leg behind the other one, right? So I'm going to take my paper. Boy, I made this all purple. Hmm. Oh, well. Maybe yours has multiple colors. That would be pretty cool. You think? Maybe your animal or your creation has a couple of different colors in it. Again, that's the nice thing about having the painted tissue or the paper that you color on with crayon because it does kind of give it that multicolored look. What do you think? Are these looking like legs? Oh my gosh, it almost looks like this elephant is walking. Okay, let's see. Doing some more tearing to get the, oh, that doesn't look a whole lot. Let's see, what can we do to that? There. Okay, and oh, look at that. We have a walking elephant. Oh, we have a walking elephant that doesn't have a trunk. Let's see. Let's go to our basket of stuff. And oh, okay, there's a yellow piece that I used to make an ear when I did my practice one. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to tear off a little bit of that and tear off a little bit of that. And now my elephant has a trunk. Um, let's see, how about some tusks? That's a fun word to say, tusks. A tusk is the kind of horn thing that comes off the front of the elephant. It's spelled T-U-S-T. K, so it's pronounced tusk, and a tusk in a real elephant. Uh, I tried that gold ribbon. I don't think that's going to work. A tusk in a real elephant is made of ivory, which is very valuable. That used to be 
what they used to make the white keys on pianos. But the thing is, if you take a piece of an animal away, it really hurts the animal, doesn't it? So we don't like to use ivory like that anymore. We want the animals to keep their body parts. So we'll use no ivory in the making of these tusks, but we will use some paper. All right. Again, I'm just kind of getting an idea for what I want to do and just tearing or cutting along. For our younger artists, it might help to draw, maybe um, draw an outline of it and cut it out. If you can draw your outline on the back of the paper, then you don't have pencil lines showing. But you know what? Psst, this thing is made of pencil lines and brush strokes, so that's okay. All right, I have an elephant body, one, two, three, four legs, a great big ear, a head, um, a trunk, two um, ivory tusks. How about an eye? Now I could color an eye. I could use my pen and color an eye in right there. Or let's go to our basket of goodies. I could put a star or, hey, how about this old button that I found? Hmm, which one do you think? Star or button? I'm gonna go with the star, because that's silly. All right, so now I have it laid out. I know what I want it to look like. Now I need to um, glue it down to my um, heavyweight paper. Remember we talked about a heavy paper or um, a light cardboard. So I have this, it's just a paste, piece of regular cardstock and I glued to it this kind of fancy paper that I thought would make a nice background for my elephant. So now, oh boy, I'm going to very carefully move the elephant and put my paper down. Okay, now I'm going to glue each section on. Is there a right way to do it? It's the way I do it. Is there a wrong way? Nope. So I'm just going to put some glue on my elephant body and stick it on here. Okay. It's got kind of coming up at the edges a little bit, and that's okay. I'm going to put some glue on the leg. <laughs> this purple disappearing glue doesn't work so well when you've got purple paper. There's one leg. There's another leg, if I can pick it up. There we go. Moosh it down a little. When you're working with tissue, the glue comes through pretty easily, so you'll want to be careful and not use too much glue. Because, um, you know, it'll kind of bleed through. And if you use uh, glue, school glue from a bottle, it will leak through, which is not a problem because when it dries, it'll be fine. But until it dries, well, it can make for some messy fingers. Well, that leg didn't quite go right, did it? Let's see if I can reposition that a little bit. There. I think our elephant is running. All right, let's put some glue on that head and stick that on. Notice that the body kind of comes to a point here. But that's okay, because, you know, I'm going to cover it up. Nobody's going to know what shape it was underneath. And so what if it comes to a point? That's the style of my elephant. My elephant likes having a pointy body. Ha! Stick on the first ear. I kind of liked the, uh, the way that Mr. Carl had some of his papers, or his um, colors overlapping. So that's what I wanted to do with this ear, is to give it two sections. And then it also almost looks like it's curling, right? Did you know that an elephant uses its ear to keep uses its ears to keep cool? Kind of like having a little fan attached to the side of your head. I could use that sometimes. Uh-oh. Look at this. My trunk is going to hang off the edge of the paper. Well, that's kind of fun, isn't it? Makes for a lovely 3D effect. Put a little bit of glue on the back of my tusks. Let's see, 
tuck that under here. Oh, stuck it on too soon. And a little bit of glue on the back of this one. And we'll have that one on this side. And I don't have to glue the star because ha ha, it's sticky on back, so I'll peel off the paper. And there we go. Oh, wait. I forgot a part of the elephant's body. We've got a body, a head, ears, two tusks, a trunk, an eye, four legs. How about a tail? Look at that. I've got a silvery pipe cleaner. Should we use silver or purple? Hmm, which one do you think? I think I'm going to go with the purple. I like the idea of a purple elephant. It's very silly, but as you all probably know by now, silly is one of my best skills. And there we have an Eric Carl styled collage. Pretty neat. So when you make this, you know, use your imagination and think about all the different things that you could do. Think about what you want to make a picture of. I chose an elephant. You can do whatever you want. Get your uh, materials together, mix them up, switch them around, do whatever you think is best. All right. Um, I thought that was kind of fun. So um, I always like to tell you about books that we have. Well, we've already seen The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And as you know, we have many Eric Carle books and almost all of his books have um, this style of illustration. They're pretty fun. Another book that I wanted to let you know that we have here at Midpoint Library is this one called Collage Workshop for Kids. And this was actually published by the Eric Carle Museum of Picture Book Art. I know, it's a whole book about how to make art in the style of Eric Carle. And some of them are projects for little kids. Some of them are projects for bigger kids. They're all pretty fun. So I encourage you to stop by the library and see if this book would be helpful to you. All right, so that's all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this Midpoint Maker. Um, and be sure to check back every week. We've got some kind of a project. Sometimes they're for big kids, you know, grown-ups. Sometimes they're for little kids, but we've always got something fun going on. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye, everybody.